Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in and waiting for our craft along this Tuesday morning. I am here with the lovely Emily and my curly-haired friend. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning. Um, I've just said curly-haired friend because we've just been talking about your lovely curls, haven't we, before the show? Yeah, it feels a little bit. Um, it, it feels a little bit big today, guys. <laughs> <laughs> There's, um, I'm getting by on caffeine and hair serum. Oh, I thought you were still off the caffeine. No, I'm, no. Oh, you've I've, gone back. I have gone back. Yeah, just I gave up back. caffeine for Lent. It was the hardest challenge ever. Um, I think it was Michelle in the comments as well said you will struggle with headaches and I did oh. um, but I'm definitely on less than I was like pre giving it up mm, I thought you was going to shock us all and continue this decaf life mm. no <laughs> no not really <laughs> Well, today we are bringing you um, a craft along, a Father's Day craft along. We heard in the comments a few weeks ago, so um, somebody had mentioned it, and we thought, yeah, we can do that. And um, Becca has very kindly prepped two cards that we're going to do later on. But before we get on into that, it's the Jubilee weekend this weekend. It is indeed. <gasps> How exciting. I know. Have you got any plans? Yeah, my mum's um, throwing a party on Friday. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, and is she going to decorate the house or outside or anything? I think... I would be surprised if she didn't. She's she's pretty extra, my mum. We're having afternoon tea. She's whipping up some oh, scones. Nice. Yeah, let me know in the comments if what people are doing because I haven't got any plans. And my street, like luckily nobody on my street will be watching. It's a very <laughs> miserable street. Nobody speaks. Oh, no. Um, there's no decorations, but you just turn outside of my road and it's all it's all there. It's oh, all going on. Yeah, our but estate just... is really up their game. I was driving oh. to work this morning and there was bunting, flags, yeah, banners. No. It was very exciting. No, mine's very silent. There's no it might maybe they just don't like me and Dave. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nobody says hello to us. But yeah, so I want to know what everyone's doing um and hopefully get some ideas. But if you have not started any Jubilee crafting or you want to and want to make any sort of decoration our lovely Barbara here has made these beautiful little hat cards how cute are these aren't they fabulous so if you did get our last magazine you will have seen these in there but we're going to pop the instructions on the blog today um, for this blue one here so if you want to have a go at this um, just please let us know and um, let us see yeah let us see any sort of crafting oh, that you've yes. been up to but you could you could use this idea and even make little bunting couldn't you oh definitely um, um like little um you could probably put them on lights do them a bit smaller and have them as like table decks yes they'd be so cute wouldn't so they so cute so yes yeah, so we hope you like that that's going to go up on the blog later today and we'll pop a post out on um our facebook page so you can go over and have a look at that but let's get into it let's have a look at this week's win it weekly so this week we have got five winners and we're not going to announce these on Friday of course we're announcing these tomorrow um, I know so it's our twist and pot positive vibes concept card collection so it's worth £19.99 and you can make 16 amazing pop out cards with this and it's it's absolutely lovely it's not that old this kit no it? it's very recent oh, yeah yeah i like it. i like it when it's um our recent me ones. too um so all you need to do is like share and comment your answer to the following question what is the official pudding of the queen's jubilee celebration is it a a salted caramel brownie is it b a classic victoria sponge with a fruity twist or is it c a lemon swiss roll amaretti trifle well, yeah, a mouthful, isn't it? It to is. Say and to eat. I know. <laughs> so all those flavours going on there. It's got to be a Victoria sponge, hasn't it? Well, I know the answer, so I'm saying nothing. Oh, do you? Yeah, okay. I do. I mean, I feel I, lo I love a food question. <laughs> I know, don't we all? <laughs> But yeah, let us know your answers and then um, during the show tomorrow, Emily will pick five lucky winners for this week's Win It Weekly for our short week. It's, it's sad, isn't it? it? Yeah. But um, yes, let's um, have a look then at what we're going to show you today. So first up, Rebecca is going to make this lovely bookmark here. So this is just perfect if you... You know, if you if you've just said you're not going to do all gifts, or if you're going to do handmade gifts, or you just that little special touch you can just give, 
like with your card as well. Yeah, definitely. And I was I was thinking of something that you could use as a tag as well. Obviously, it's quite a long tag, so it'd be perfect for like maybe a nice bottle of wine or a bottle of whiskey. Yeah. Which I feel like I get my dad every single year. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then you can use it after you know for his reading or to pop on holiday or just to kind of keep in a drawer with some sentimental knickknacks. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we'll just show you what you need and then we'll show you a few products as well before we go into the craft along. So to make this bookmark, you will need our pretty patterned um, parchment, our wonderful wood. Oh no, I've read that all wrong. <laughs> you will need our pretty patterned parchment, um, our, one of our pattern packs, ribbon, the straight edge tag punch, and of course the world's greatest dad luxury topper set. But you know, you can make this with any sort of topper set you've got lying around. And then optional is a heat embossing and the Versamark and the gold wow powder. So if you want to craft along with us, that's what you need today to to like to craft along yeah, with Becca. Absolutely. And yeah, like you said, if you haven't got this particular topper set or this particular adorable scoreable, I've made it so that it can be easily swapped out or maybe you fancy ordering it. Oh yeah. And watching it back. Yes, definitely. So we just grabbed some of the products here to show you what we're going to use. So we've got the world's greatest dad luxury topper set. So we've still got this in stock. So if you want to grab this, you can go on the website and order that today and then craft along with uh, Becca at another time. Um, that's three forty nine. Of course, all our top sets are only five for four. And then um, the very front of the bookmark, Becca has used our our printed parchment. So I've just put that behind some green card for you to see the patterns here. So you get sixteen sheets in that, and that's nine pound ninety nine. And there's lots of lovely little patterns you can see just there. Yeah. So lots of options for you. Of course, we've got adorable scoreable here. Um, Oh, is this showing me the parchment? Oh, but you can use adorable scoreable. <laughs> Absolutely. And then um, we have got pattern packs. So you know, on the website, we've got tons of pattern packs for you to choose from, all different themes. But um, this one's particularly nice for Father's Day. Yeah, it really is, isn't it? It's so like, I don't know. I think it's just got that really kind of masculine edge, like some yeah. really funky. And I love the different types of wood grains that we've got in there like we've got the sort of chipboard the cork the sort of tree trunk with the rings like there's so many different textures yeah and i know when we're doing our father's day crafting or any sort of male um inspired cards we'll often put like gardening themes or sheds or anything oh, yes. like that nice and like cozy cozy vibes and this pan pack just works perfectly for it that. does it does so that's um seven pounds 99 and um is it did you use the tag punch on the bookmark i have yeah the straight edge the straight edge so this is 17 pound 99 um and of course becca has just used this to straighten the edges of her bookmark but again this is perfect for using just little gift making little gift tags or anything like that so yeah that's all you'll need for um the first demo so let's come over to you absolutely oh how exciting right so let's get started with that so we are going to take our top of set we're going to take our parchment and we're going to take our wooden pattern pack so i've just chosen this one here um now the top of set we are going to make a card with so we're just going to be really sort of um, we're not using loads and loads of the topper set, um, so I'm just going to open this one up. We're going to take our um, foiled cardstock and we're going to take our topper sheet. Okay, so I'm just going to put the topper sheet to one side just for the time being and just grab our cardstock first of all. Now, I really want this mug, um, so what I want to do is cut this to two and a half inches. Obviously, if we kind of line it up there, um, we're going to miss a lot of the detail on this mug. And obviously, you can fussy cut round it or anything like that. But I'm just going to take some off the left-hand side. I'm going to go right up to the design. So let's just pop that in there. Perfect. And then it should kind of marry up quite nicely then. Put it at a sort of on the skinny side of two and a half. Yes. Perfect. Okay, so we've got that layer done. And then the next layer is our parchment. So this is just a piece of scrap so that I wasn't using a full A4 sheet. And we're gonna do the same again. The design that I've chosen has these amazing sort of paint splatters so that it really echoes the cardstock. 
because um, this parchment was designed to go with the memorable moment. So you'll see a lot of the patterns repeated throughout all the collection. So we'll cut that down as well to two and a half. And this will make sure it'll go through our straight egg edge um, tag punch really nicely. So we've got that one. And then finally, we're going in with our wood grain sort of pattern pack. And again, just cutting that to two and a half inches. Okay, and now let's do the length. So you want to cut all your strips to about eight inches. I found it's a really nice sort of measurement for your bookmark. So all of our strips are gonna be two and a half um, on the width and then eight inches in length. Let me just bring that down a little bit further for you guys. I think this as well, it's super, easy once you've made the first one to do quite a few oh it? definitely yeah you can batch make these really easily um you know just get your punch going and as well if you don't want to use a full topper set if you've done any sort of crafting all you need is like the side bit of some printed cardstock oh definitely over. i'm sure two and a half inches isn't so long that it couldn't be scraps or bits and yeah. pieces you know like these are just sort of you know nice thin sort of strips and then we've got this cardstock for another card or another project. Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, yeah, we've got plenty for leftovers. Okay, so next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take our tag punch. Because I've cut it to two and a half, it lines up perfectly on these grooves. And then we're just going to oh, get my muscles in gear. And then that is our tag. So it's got really nice um, hole there and nice angular joins. We've got a couple of tag punches. Um, like we've got one with a really nice fancy edge, but I do think the straight edge one just looks a bit better on a more masculine project. Okay, so going in with the next layer. I do actually need a bookmark, Becca. Do you? Yeah, I've, my mum always gives me her books. And this last time she's given me some new books that she's not read yet and i've got them i've sent all the pages and i'll just leave it on the armchair like oh, not yeah. short just all bent so do you need a new one yes yeah, so then when i give it a back it looks like five people have read it oh no because yeah. you've got tatty pages got tatty oh pages. that is naughty i know well i think you could i know you're not a massive crafter but i think you could whip one of these out this is quite a nice beginners one yeah Okay, so the layers that we're going to go with are as follows. So we're going to put the wood grain to the back, then we've got the topper set, and then we'll have our parchment on top so that we just see that beautiful mug just in the background there. Okay, so hopefully everyone is following along. That wasn't too quick. So we've just done the strips and we've punched them with our straight edge tag punch. And so you've done all three strips the same size? Yep, yep. they're all eight by two and a half. Yep. Perfect. Um, okay, so the next bit is optional so i'm going to take some versamark and some wow embossing powder and the one i've gone with is the gold so metallic gold rich this is a super fine one um, but you can use any embossing powder um, in your stash okay and then what i'm kind of going to do is i'm just going to kind of randomly swipe and sort of sponge this down oh see when i looked at this i thought it was a stamp no do you it know is, our spot, was it, we had a stamp, was it spot stamp? Yeah, we did. Something like that. Um, Splats or something. Yeah, I think we did. But no, it is just literally just rubbing my Versamark along there. Oh, I don't believe. Yeah, just as simple as that. So we'll see how this turns out. Obviously, you're going to get a different look every time. And you can't really see it there because it's so, so clear. Um, but yeah, you can sort of see where it's saturated it a little bit. Okay, yeah. so let's pour on our embossing powder do you know kelly i had a bit of an accident with the craft knife this morning that's why i've got this silly plaster on oh yes, it's did. it's driving me nuts has it stopped bleeding uh yeah yeah it has but flipping heck it was very sharp right and then let's go on this corner so we're just pouring it on just kind of like not being too delicate and then if any sort of do go kind of around around the outside that's kind of fine um we don't really want to necessarily use an anti-static bag or anything like that because we kind of want these edgy sort of splattery details on there so let's get that heat embossed and bring it to life i absolutely adore heat embossing on parchment you know 
it's such a really cool effect. Yeah, I really like heat, anything that's heat embossed. It's just magical, isn't it? It's yeah. absolutely magical. Um, but I, ju I don't know, I just think on parchment, it just adds something really, really special. Okay, so we'll put our embossing powder away. And then we are going to bring in our heat tool. So this is just the one off our website, our WOW embossing powder brand one. Um, but you can obviously use any. And I'm going to put it on, let's put it on the highest setting, just so it's... Oh, I think this might be the lower one, actually. There we go. And we just by magic. I know! Okay, perfect. So that's all we need. And like I say, we've picked up a little bit, just not using an anti-static bag and just kind of roughly um, guiding your Versa mark on there. Just gives you that really cool, like splattered effect there. It's really, really cool. So that's gonna look so, so nice behind our topper, um, our cardstock, sorry. Okay, and the topper that I'm gone with is You're the Best. Um, and the shape just marries up so nicely. Um, so you can put that absolutely anywhere on your bookmark. I might put it, I might just put it here actually. And then we can cover it up with some foam pads. Um, if you're using it on somewhere that's quite clear, I'd maybe use like a glue stick or something that's gonna, um, you know, not be visible under yeah. that parchment. It's a bit like acetate, you need to hide your workings. Um, but we'll pop it on this gold side because that will hide it quite nicely. And we'll just pop two on so that it'll be really nice and well hidden behind that gold embossing. Yeah, if we put it slightly this way as well, we can sort of see all, all the detail on there. Okay, so I'm just going to pop two little square foam pads and pop that kind of on here. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Looking good. Um, so then the next stage is just finishing it off. We're absolutely done and dusted. It's so, so easy to make these with your tag punch. Um, so I've got two lots of ribbon here. I've got this beautiful sort of brown organza one with the stripes. And then I've got some of our trusty gold satin ribbon. So we're going to cut like a really nice sort of length off of this. So just going to finish those off. And then we're going to go in with... Oh, sorry, getting everything everywhere. Right, let's put those to one side for just a second. This is a really long piece of ribbon. Um, yeah, let's do that, because we can always trim it down after. Becca, I think from reading the comments this morning, I am wrong with my choice for the Win It Weekly question. Oh, are you? I think so. Oh, well, I'm there guessing you go. so. There is a lot of answers for C, Lemon Swiss Roll and Amaretti Trifle. Yeah, I, I, could, know, I don't even know if that appeals to you. I know, me. I'd quite, I'd be interested to try it, you know, Kelly. Yeah, like, oh, oh, I'd never say no. I know, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't feel like, oh, I really must whip that up at home. I mean, I never feel like that anyway. I'm not a baker, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, but yeah, I don't think, oh, I really must try that. Um, okay. So just literally going in, threading it through, so folding it in half, pushing it through the hole, and then tying it through the top. Um, in fact, I should have done them both at the same time. But that's fine, we can just fix this, it won't be a sec. I'm just gonna gently, yeah, perfect, place that out. So fold both of our ribbons in half, grab them both together, Give them a little squeeze and then just push them through all of the holes on your tags. Also, I didn't mention before, but this topper set that Becca is using, it's got textured foil, so it's really nice, isn't it? And it just, yeah. And then with Becca putting the embossing powder, it just really ties it in. It does, doesn't it? Because yeah. like I say, you've got those sort of texturized sort of splashes on the cardstock and on the toppers and yeah it's really 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 cool set okay so then just thread all of those through the hole um i have chosen to use really thick ribbon obviously at home if you're using something a bit thinner it'll be so much easier and then pull them through to create your 
um, sort of string that can stick out of your book or your paper and yeah and then we'll cut them down and you can cut them down to sort of your preference so I'm going to cut the satin one down I'm going to cut that a bit shorter and you can either cut them into little flat into little diagonals like that you can cut them perfectly straight or what you can do is you can cut them into little fish tails so just snip in a little bit off each side and then you have a really cute little fishtail one. Oh yeah, that's sweet. Super, super easy as well. Just literally just a little triangle on each side into the center on both sides. So let's just do that with that one so that it all marries up really nicely. I've cut it so short now, I don't think I'll be able to, but we'll give it a go. Here we go. Uh, Vicky on YouTube says, I still haven't tried heat embossing and I have the heat tools and powders. Definitely try. I am not the biggest crafter, but I do have some stamps and heat embossing gun and powders at home and I love it. I think it's really good. Definitely. And I think this would be a more forgiving way to try it than stamps because you're not doing a particular yeah. image. It doesn't matter if like this looks a little bit different to the example one and that's okay. Like it's it's fine. It's supposed to. Yeah. Um, it's not supposed to be anything in particular. So we're done, Kelly. I love that. Um, so we've nice. got our sort of three layers. Yep all on there really really beautiful and again you could mix and match if you don't have these exact items we've got our ribbon there and we've got our teensy little topper which the shape just marries up perfectly um, so like i say if you wanted to pot this around a bottle of wine i would leave the ribbons a bit longer yeah. and tie it round um, or anything like that and if you wanted it to just be a tag you could cut it shorter as well there's loads of ideas for that how to use that punch it's amazing Oh, well, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Very in, I have enjoyed your bookmark demo. Maybe I I, I've got a day off tomorrow. So maybe I should make a bookmark. Oh, absolutely. And so the second um, demo Rebecca's going to do, so you can see that this just works perfectly with the bookmark. So it's still using that same topper. So it's, it's just ideal for a little gift, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah really nice and um, so what you will need if you want to craft along with us for the second demo is the following so again the world's greatest dad luxury topper set or you can use any other topper sets in your stash um, gold mary card diamond sparkle gemstones we've used the gold studs on this one and a four by eight inch card blank so not very much at all for this card no absolutely not um and again you can get both of these demos out of the same topper set so it's really oh, good value good. yeah um because we're going to use the other piece of cardstock we've obviously only used one little tiny tag topper on the bookmark so yeah. we can use all the rest of it oh, nice yeah so, um before we go to you again emily has very kindly just picked some other just some other inspiration if you're if you need to start your father's day crafting or anything like that so we have got the happy father's day die so you can grab this for three pounds 99 and this is usually 4.99 but just for today while we did this show dedicated to this craft along we just thought we'll just take a little pound off so it's three pounds 99 if you want to grab this um, and then some other male inspired products for you so we've got this whopper topper pad what a guy so this is 13.99 so there's 20 designs in here i'll just flick through and show you some of them I love this pad. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah. I think all our male inspired ones are quite are quite popular, aren't they? Yeah, because it's it's known to be a difficult one to craft for male cards, isn't yeah. it? Like, you know, sometimes we can really struggle with them. And so what's good about these is that all you know, a super size, large topper. So you don't have to do much else. You can you know, just pop some foam pads on the back, some nice um, patterned cardstock, and you can pretty much leave it like that. We've got sentiments as well and borders. So it's super easy to just whip up something really quick. Oh, definitely. And we've got every sort of theme covered here, haven't we? We've got yeah. like sports, cars, gardening, relaxation. Yeah. So whatever the special man in your life is into, I think we've got it covered. And if you need to, um, you know, any inspiration for any cards to make this weekend, we've got some here by the team. Oh, look at that one with all that diamond Ooh, sparkles on the back. That is fabulous. That's really nice. And such an easy idea as well. If you've got any of the glittery sheets at home, just cut them up into strips, lay them on, and that's just a background just ready to go. Um, anything in our colourful mirror just looks amazing. Oh, isn't it? It's everyone's favourite. It really is. 
and so you can see here how you know you don't have to be too extravagant we've just simply popped out those toppers those little square toppers and made a nice dl size card Oh, like oh, I thought. Do you know? I thought that was actually ribbon. Oh, yeah. So do I. It, yeah, it does, does look really textured, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. Um, and then we've got this one as well. So an, a nice large card as well, because I know quite a few of us like creating these bigger, super size cards. Yeah, absolutely. And then of course with our perfect pastimes that um, we recently brought out, there's quite a few toppers on here that would be perfect for this sort of crafting. So we've got train inspired ones and then we've got this lovely one here just such beautiful artwork in our um perfect pastimes oh yeah definitely and like i said before these toppers are any five for four or 349 each and here we've got sporting silhouettes which again is amazing i love the sporting silhouettes oh, i just love the black i color. do yeah it's so nice there we go as well so i hope that helps if anybody is stuck for any sort of inspiration for what to craft for the guys in our lives um but yes let's go over to becca and she will make this fabulous card for us yes okay so let's get our stuff ready um so again like i say we've got pretty much the whole topper sheet here left um we have got our printed card stock left um so we're going to be using that so our printed card start the topper sheet, a sheet of gold mirror, and a four by eight card blank. Now I've just got an eight by eight one here, so I'm just gonna chop that down so that we are ready to go. Okay, so. So first of all, I'm just gonna make my card blank. Like I say, you might have this already at home, um, but I'm just gonna cut that down to, now you can cut it whichever way you want, but for this demo, it really is best with um, the score on this side. So. We'll pop that there and cut it to four. And then we've got some leftover ink me for other projects. Um, or you could just use the right size card blank to start with, but we didn't have one in here. <laughs> okay, perfect. So just gonna give this um, score line a nice good crease so that it's as flat as possible. And then we wanna bring our trimmer back in and open it up, line it up onto the four inch mark and then this is the joy of our trimmer cut right up to the score line and then stop so i'm just gently kind of going down a bit further each time until we reach the score line and again if you're a bit nervous about doing that you can go as far as you can and then snip the rest or use a craft knife it is up to you okay so now we have got um, the base to make our sort of double easel. So I'm going to bring on our scoreboard because we do need that. And then this is going to make our sort of triangular panels. Um, now this one is quite easy because it's 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 been defaced. So we can just line it up at six. What do you mean? Please, oh. can you see the big grey line? <laughs> um, so that is done. We know you guys already know our secret, but that is done so that you can line the two corners up really easily. Oh, okay. I thought you meant the way you said that somebody's been in, vandalised our stuff. Well, I mean, technically <laughs> it is. I can't bring myself to do it on mine. Um, my scoreboard is very neat and it doesn't have any um, sort oh, of lines on. But the studio one is great because I can just pinch this, line it up onto the grey line and I know exactly where to go. That's really handy with like triangular panels and fancy sort of folds. So I'm just going to give it a nice big score, corner to corner, really sort of press that down and then do the same on this side. So let me just fold that away and then we want to do the same on this. So again, lining it up on our scoreboard and then giving it a really good groove. Okay. Um, oh, I've done it wrong. I've done it the wrong way around. Sorry. So I'm just going to bang out that score that I've just done just by swiping my knife, my score knife over it really easily. And then I'm going to actually score it the other way around because I'm not happy oh, with, yeah. I'm not happy with how that looks. Okay. Um, Elaine on um, Facebook has said sporting silhouettes has been one of my favorite kits hopefully you will think of other things you can make silhouettes out of oh yeah um, what would you like to see and if anybody's got any ideas put them, put them in the comments 
That's better. So I'll just, if anyone is crafting along, I do apologise for getting the score wrong. That's okay, you can't see now. No, no, absolutely not. And um, yeah, it's fine. We're going to mat and layer it and it'll be fine. So we want to score from that side to that side on this one and then kind of like the opposite way around on this side. So you'll bring in that side and then bring in that side and have a nice little, it's almost like a little triangle or like a little yeah. boat shape, isn't it? Yeah. So we'll give those a really good crease just to let everyone catch up. And then we will make our mirror mats and do the mats and layers. So are you enjoying making fancy folded, fancy fold cards now? Yeah, I do actually. Yeah, yeah I think I've always enjoyed fancy fold cards, but um, yeah, I definitely feel like more sort of confident. Like I say, I've been here like just over a year now and I've learned a lot on the job. It's really good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I definitely feel a little bit more sort of confident doing fancy folds on the show. Um, I do normally do a bit of crafting with the help of the magic of TV. I do like to prep ahead of time. Yes. So I was a bit nervous today, but it's okay. Oh, um, so nervous. what we have done is we've cut our mirror down to four and then eight. So I'll just bring our trimmer in again, just so you can see those. So eight inches and then four on there. So that's gonna be our bottom piece of our easel. Okay. And then what we want to do next is do a four by four square. So I'm gonna bring the mirror just down here, cut our length first, so that we're not wasting too much mirror. And then four on there to be a square. And now it's really easy to cut triangles out of squares on here because you just, again, line up the two corners you can rest that in as well as a really nice little groove for your square of mirror to wedge into. And then just chop. And then obviously we want our next uh, mat and layer. So we'll leave the trimmer out, bring in our cardstock. Now this still wants to be the bottom of our easel. So we're gonna cut that to two notches under the four. And then two notches under the eight. Okay, so that's our first one done. And then for our square, we want to go two notches under the four again, and two notches under the four again to create our square. Okay, perfect. And the same technique again, putting the two corners in and then just cutting across. So those are our two triangular pieces. So let's get our tape and mat and layer all of that together. So bringing out our mirror back in, we'll do the, obviously the rectangular one first, and then we'll do the, the two little triangles. So I'm going in with my amazing trusty finger lift tape. Which I think if anybody needs a tape stock up is on Super Savers. It is. Yeah, the finger lift and the double sided ones are on offer. So whichever you like to use. Um, they're on. Okay, so I'm just going to remove that with my dye brush because even though it is finger lift, I still just like that extra help. And this is on Super Savers as well. Okay, okay. So, how have we laid it on the card? Have we laid the coffee cups on that side? Yes, we have. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So, it doesn't really matter. I think either way would look good. But we're going to lay it on this way, Matt, and layer it onto our card. If my tape wants to grab, there we go. Perfect. And then we'll do the same again for our triangles. Now triangles are a little bit awkward to tape. Um, so you can use glue dots are really handy to get right into those corners. Yeah. Um, but I'm just gonna use a couple of strips of tape. Um, the finger lift one uh, has quite a nice grab anyway. So I'll just sort of stick three kind of pieces on there. So we're going to obviously do that on both sides to mat and layer them. And then we've got our double easel. It's a really fun fold to do. It looks really impressive, but it's super, super easy. Okay, so let's mat and layer those together. Just going to, just before we do, check that I've cut them really nicely and not too tight. Yeah, they're fine. So what was the difference in the two squares that you cut? Uh, I've done two notches under. Oh, okay. So the big gold mirror square. Yep. As you can see, I'll put it on the mat so you can see that's four by four. Yeah. So then I've just gone two notches under on each side. Oh, okay. But a good two notches, you know, like on the skinny side of the mark on the trimmer. Yeah. So it's a nice sort of 
um, a nice mat and layer, nice border. Um, obviously, if you don't want to do your mat and layers that tight, you don't have to. Um, I do like them really, really tight. And again, that comes with practice as well. Yeah. Um, so like when I was at home, like before I worked here, I'd do quarter of an inch, three notches. Um, and then as your confidence sort of progresses, you can do them a bit tighter just for that really nice kind of neat look. Okay, so put that on there. And as well at home, you might want to kind of like gut to your mirror or like weed out the center just to make it go that little bit further. Okay, okay. And then let's put that on here. And then we can stick everything onto our card and then the best part, embellishing it with our beautiful toppers. Perfect. So again, we're gonna put some tape on here so that we can stick it to the card. So just three nice long strips on here and then we'll do our triangles as well. And then this one as well. We've got some ideas for more silhouettes sort of style kits. Um, animals, tools, cats and dogs. Oh, cats and dogs would look cute. <laughs> it would. Yeah, and again, like you could, if you love our sporting silhouettes, you could do the same shape card, just swap it out for those. Um, okay, so let's put this onto our card. So just putting it up to the score line and then laying it down. And then the same for our triangles. So we'll take the tape off and lay those down. Um, I've got an insert in our card as well. Um, it's not on the supplies list because it is completely optional. You can either use the matching one or um, one of our fabulous other inserts that we've got. Oh, and are you just popping that on the back? Yeah, I'm going to pop that on the back. But I think, uh, yeah, I think I might do that now and then give everyone a chance to catch up if they're not doing an insert and then we'll move on to the toppers. Because yeah. once those toppers are on, it might be a bit awkward to start kind of turning the card round and putting those on. So we'll do that next. Okay, so that is our double easel made. Just again, we'll just give everything a nice good score now that we've layered all those card stocks on there it's a little bit heavier and now they're nice and sitting nice and flush okay so i've gone with the trim me pad in the special days because it's foiled in gold so it matches perfectly and it's got have a happy father's oh, day it's perfect yeah um obviously it's got all those other amazing occasions in okay and this doesn't have a landscape for by a um fold but it's absolutely fine because the measurements make it really easy. So what you want to do is start cutting it to eight by eight and then we can trim our length down. Okay, so lining it up on the guide, it's really, really easy to do. And then, so we trimmed it to eight by eight on those both sides. And then we wanna do, we want to follow the lines for the four by four. Oh, Jackie on Facebook has said, I'm going to try this card. Thank you, Rebecca. No worries, it's a great shape to try. I hope you get on with it and send us a picture if you do it. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so that should be nice and central and the perfect size. So let's have a look. Oh yes, that's perfect. Okay, so let's get some tape on that and pop our insert on. Um, I just absolutely love how easy those are to do. Okay, okay. Lots of love for easel cards on YouTube. Well, they're the best, aren't they? They're so, so simple to make. I'd say they are one of my favorite shapes just because of how nice and simple they are to do. Okay, so just laying this on, it'll give us a slight white edge, which is absolutely fine, um, but we've just got to take our time and lay that nice and centrally. Okay, so that gives us space somewhere to write our message, a really nice little secret panel for like yeah. dad. It's really, really cute. Okay, and then let's bring in our toppers. Okay, so the ones that I want to go with are this number one with his mug and the world's greatest handyman. Um, so even if you're not crafting for dad in particular, um, 
obviously I'm actually going to use these button toppers. So we've got dad and we've got just for you. But if you're not crafting for dad, if you're crafting for granddad, uncle, husband, yeah. just leave the dad one off. That's absolutely fine. Um, okay, perfect. Right, let's snip the pips off here whilst everyone's catching up. And then we're going to pop these on both of our sort of triangular easels. So we're just going to trim those up really nice and neat. And then the same for the other one as well. Really, really nice shape this with like inverted corners. So it's really going to look dead funky. I think for people who are looking for, do you know, granddad or grandpa, I'm pretty sure our, our sentiment pads have sentiments in for, yeah, don't the, they? Yeah, the sentiment pads or we have got relative dies that you oh, could yeah. use. So you know, there's loads of options. Yes, yeah, so you could also personalise your cards that way because I know we don't have any specific granddad topper sets at the minute do we? No not that I can think of so I'm just laying my toppers off and just drawing a line just where they're going to sit just so that um, I'm really neat with my foam pads and I don't accidentally place them too far so the next thing that we are going to need is our foam pads so um, let's just see what we've got in here um, I kind of want some nice large square ones oh these will do um, so these are our strips but you can just cut them up okay and then this one yeah the same again for this side so I've like I said I've just drawn a line just so that I don't um, overplace my foam pad because there's nothing worse than peeling it up and you can still see a little bit of residue on the side um, so it's just worth taking that extra minute to just be super super precise and careful with our foam pads okay so just popping them on there so i missed that because i think i was looking at the comments but have you put a line so that you know which side to put your foam pads or that they don't go over? yeah so i've placed it on just laid it out in yeah. fact i'll do it with this one because there's no i've not peeled the back so i've kind of laid it out on there turned oh, my I card see. over and drawn a pencil line okay. so that i don't put foam pads on this section yeah Oh, that's a good tip. It, it, I think so. Um, like I say, I don't always have to do it, but I thought oh, on the craft along, I want to be really neat and really precise. And that's just going to really do us a favour. And then you can place it down slightly further so that you're not going to see that line when you stick your toppers on. If it is hanging over, you can just rub it out. That's absolutely fine. Okay, and then let's stick this one on as well. So we're kind of just sticking those. I love that the shapes are kind of really really nice they've got the um, same indented corners and everything so they go together perfectly right let's get some foam pads on these these are just going to be extra decorations and i'm going to go in with our circular ones um i saw natalie show these ones off on the penny slider cards and they're just so perfect for like little button toppers like this yeah um because you've got quite a lot of the time with like square or rectangular foam pads you can just get a little bit of overhang really easily whereas these you don't because they're that perfect round shape um, so I'm just going to push them out of the sheet so we've got dad in that beautiful textured foiling and then we've got the just for you so these could be your stoppers if you wanted to but I'm going to use my gemstones as stoppers so I'm just going to align those onto the bottom right hand corner yeah that looks good yeah they do don't they okay so we want our easels to stand nice and proud again might just give it another little score because we've been messing around putting all our embellishments on so that stands nice and proud now and then let's just use some of these lovely gold studs as our stoppers so uh, i'm just going to sort of put them roughly kind of in the middle under the topper I do love this shape as well because it's really nice sort of it I don't know if you're a fan of like perfect symmetry this is a lovely one to do oh my gemstone's being a bit naughty won't be a second I'm just going to place that on just on there perfect so just three on there just to give that a really nice good hold this one has been a right pain. Okay, and then the same again for the other side. So again, give it a really nice good crease so it stands nice and proud. And then kind of do the same. So it's obviously we want it symmetrical with that. So it's just hanging over that yellow border. So we'll place it there. 
And then have we got sort of three of the smaller ones? Yeah, we do. So again, just putting those as symmetrically as you can get them. But I think if you wanted to do it a bit differently, you could have them jaunting out at different angles. That would look really cool. Um, but I've just done it like that. And then, there we are. That is all finished, That's all really done. Good. Using one topper set. And we've still got these two massive ones for our other cardstock. Oh, yeah. Um, our, yeah, to use with our other cardstock. So we've got plenty if you love a bit of frugal crafting. I was just going to say frugal. Very frugal. Yes. I do like to try and be frugal. And that is our double easel, the world's greatest handyman, world's greatest dad topper set. Oh, thank you so much. Lots of lovely comments coming in for this. And a lot of people are going to try and make their own. So that's Amazing. Lovely. I know. Um, and we're all a fan of a fancy, fancy shape card, aren't I we? Think I think so, yeah. Is here. Um, but we've got time. I know you've prepped a little something I have. special. I have. So if you want to, then we can. So um, we don't know, obviously, how long our craft alongs are going to take because we take our time and, and start these from scratch. So Becca had prepped a little project that, you know, you might like to try out yourself. It's quite nice. It's quite personal. Yeah. Um, so I think we're, we've definitely, we're going to squeeze it are in. Are we going to so squeeze it in? Yeah, I think so. It'd be a shame not to. Absolutely. Um, and I can speed this one up a little bit, Kelly. Yeah. You know, if because this isn't on the craft along, so I can speed it up a little smidgy bit if we need to. Oh, it's up to you. Um, yes. So I think um, I, I've got some other little things here to show you just while Becca tidies up her little station. So just a continuation from our sporting silhouettes. We, of course, have got the dies which are amazing. So they're eleven ninety nine each, or you can get um, all three for twenty seven ninety seven. Um, and these are perfect. They're part of our cutter card range. So you literally, you just put this through the die machine, and you've got that lovely silhouette style that you can just pop on a pattern card or just cut it out of colored card. And that's basically all the work done for you. So you can see here, so some of you might have already made cards like this that you can just get out for Father's Day. And here we go. And then we do have what um, Becca was just using then to make um, the stopper for her easel. is the Diamond Sparkles um, stud. So we've got the gold ones and we've got the silver ones. So the £2.99. So they're really good these because they're... Are they, is it me just looking at them or are they slightly bigger than our diamond sparkles? They are, yeah. They are, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. I think our newer ranges, so our like Midnight Ombre and some of the other ones, they are that bit bigger in size. Yeah. Um, and I really like these because, I mean, I can argue that bling belongs on any card. Oh, absolutely. But I think these have got a really nice masculine edge. They kind of yeah. remind me of like jeans, studs, like, yeah. you know, the little studs that you get on your pockets and stuff. They're really cool, aren't they? Yeah, and well, like Becca used them, they make perfect stoppers because they're just that tiny bit bigger. Yeah. So they can hold your fold back. So yeah, that's all from me, and we'll go back to Becca for absolutely this little, this extra project. Yeah, so let me just get my measurements together. Okay, so what I wanted to do um, was make this out of the book, but I've just changed the measurements a little bit. Okay, so this is our photo memory large matchbox, but we're not making it to a matchbox size. We're just going to make it to a square box. Um, and we're going to put some little mementos. And if anyone's like a little scrapbook fan, um, they could do them as little mini scrapbook pages. OK, so let's get started. And like I say, I've done a little bit um, more ahead of time. OK, so let's just move the trimmer there. OK, so I'm going in with our wood pattern pack because I thought I didn't want to bring a different one in so that, again, it's just keeping it frugal. So I've cut two pieces. And let me just check the measurements for this. It's six and a quarter by six and a quarter. Okay. And the best way to make boxes is to just score an inch all the way around. Um, and not one and five and a quarter because that just doesn't go right. So if we score at one, and you only need to remember one measurement. So rotate the cardstock rather than scoring at an inch each side. So just score at one inch all the way around by rotating your cardstock. Super simple way to make your boxes. So the right hand side is our box lid. And then the other side is our box base. 
So really, really handy with the adorable scoreball, it, uh, scoreboard. It's got that box making technology. So we'll line it up to 12 and then score all the way around at 11. You know, I made something very similar to this when um, I was asking my maid of honour to be my maid of honour. Really? Yeah, so it like pulled out and then it was like lots of pictures and at the very end I was like, will you be my maid of honour? Oh my oh. goodness, what a lovely idea because the way it opens out is you could see that last, couldn't you? Yeah. Oh, amazing. And you say you're not a crafter, Kelly. Well, it wouldn't have been to, you know, to your standards. I know, but honestly, anyone can craft. I like to think that I can. Yeah, absolutely. Can you get your lots, you <gasps> oh, God. I'm on, I've only just got used to being in the, on this side. I can't go. Yeah, that is very true. <laughs> can't go to your oh, side. You enjoy hosting, though, don't you, Kelly? Yeah, I like hosting. I like watching, seeing what you guys get up yeah, to. Yeah, absolutely. So we're just going to cut our little slivers in our box. You don't need to, but I do feel like it makes your box stand a little bit tighter. So we're just going to do that. And then the same again for our other one. So this is our box lid. So again, just cutting up those score lines where they meet. So just all the way around, four cuts, and then we'll cut the slivers into the tabs. So just little triangles. You don't have to be too precise with them. I've chosen a really busy pattern and I can ho genuinely hardly see where it <laughs> especially because like I keep my my massive hair out of the way <laughs> okay perfect so we're going to need some red tape to stick this together um so I'm just going to bring that in now so using our high tap tape it's our absolute best best friend for construction projects let's move the scoreboard out of the way for now as well we are going to need it back in a minute but just to get it out of the way Okay, so again, we'll just go around and give our scores a really nice good crease so that the box comes together a little bit easier. And as well, I tend to find that when you don't give them a crease, like you start bringing them up and you start sort of cracking and creasing your cardstock. So just give them a really nice good crease. Okay, now, um, have I got one that I've already found the end on? No, of course I haven't. Oh, for your red tape? Yeah, it's just because I've got this little bit of an end here. Here we go, here we go. You got it. Do you know, red tape, it is a nightmare, isn't it, sometimes, when you first get it out of the packet. It just wants to stick to everything. Okay, so just putting a little piece on each of our tabs. Just going around and doing that. This is really boring. I would have normally done this ahead of time. That's okay. Um... But it's, like I say, it's not my usual style to do start to finish, and I've actually really enjoyed it. Yeah, I think, I think they went really, really well. I think so. I think they've come together really nicely, and I think having a little practice has definitely helped. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like you do, it's nice to just give it a go sometimes, isn't it? Um, Debbie has put, I love making boxes. Do you know, I have never properly use the scoreboard to make a box. I've have used you not? it before in the past. I, I've never made a box with it. I have to say, I'm not the biggest 3D crafter. I'm really not. Like cards is definitely my jam. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Um, but I do really enjoy how easy it is to make boxes on the scoreboard. Um, I just think if without it, I, w I never made boxes ever. Yeah. Um, and now I, yeah, I enjoy it too, actually. Like I say, it's not my absolute go-to sort of form of crafting, but I do enjoy it. Okay, okay. So just peeling back those tapes and then bringing it all together. Oh, do you know, left them on the wrong side, but it's fine. As well, our handbooks, our crafting handbooks are so helpful. Oh, they really are. For any sort of projects and if you want to, you know, create something a little bit extra, um, there's more 3D Fancy. makes in there. Yeah. Okay, so that is our box. Um, I have taped the wrong side. You should probably tape this side, but because it's such a busy pattern, it's really forgiving. Um, so it doesn't matter. Oh, Anne Crawford on Facebook has just put, should the tape not go on the hat? It should, oh, it no. absolutely should. 
Um, and I did know that as well. I've probably written it down. Um, <laughs> but like I say, this one in particular is a super, super busy pattern. So it, you kind of get away with it. Um, but yeah, uh, the tape should definitely go on the other side. And then you don't get those little tabs. But like I say, it's kind of, it's well disguised. Yeah, you can't really see. I, st I, I knew as soon as I started bringing it together, I was like, oop. No, I think we're styling it out. This is how you wanted it to be. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it looks yep. really grungy and different. Absolutely. Yes, that's what we're going for. <laughs> Fake it till you make it. Okay, so let's pop those together. Okay, and then just sliding them in just to check that they fit. Perfect. So that's our little box. Okay, so the next bit that we need to do is our pages for our little memory box. So our box kind of now measures at four and a quarter by four and a quarter. So we're going to make our squares up to four by four and a half. So I've cut all my strips to sort of four inches and I've just gone with these really nice brown tones because they match perfectly. And then we're going to cut them to four and a half. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, four and a half. So obviously I'm going in with about four pieces of adorable scoreable. So really get that blade working hard. And it's just cut through all of that like a champ. Um, perfect. So how many have I got here? That should be enough. Uh, might just cut one more actually. Do need a bit of the wood grain one. Oh no, is it too short? Oh, that's okay. We'll go in with another one. So what length is this one? Is this four by, yeah, four and a half. So let's do a couple of this one. And then we can really mix and match all of our patterns. Perfect. And we can use the ones that we like the best anyway. Um, okay, so let's get these all scored. So this is really, really easy. We're just gonna score it at four to give ourselves a half an inch tab. Oh, so is this where you will stick them together? Yeah. I see, okay. So really, really easy. Just score them all at four. And then it's a nice, again, it's a nice round number to kind of remember as well. So have you brought some pictures in? I have, oh, yeah. Nice. I started my crafting journey at a really, really young age with a scrapbook. I just loved it. That's how I got into crafting, I'd say. Um, yeah, I had a scrapbook from like the age of eight. And being a 90s girl, it was Smash Hits magazine. Oh, and yeah. The Argos catalogue with all the funky toys in. Um, yeah, very, very much. And then my mum actually um, got married when I was about nine and she had all the wedding magazines and I just scrapbooked my head off. Like I poured over like the big princess dresses Aww. and cut all those out. She saved me all her wedding magazines. Um, so that's kind of how I sort of started, subconsciously started my crafting journey. Yeah. And I've, I've pretty much scrapbooked on and off ever since. I just think it's just such a nice way to um, kind of make those special memories. So we're going to stick these together. Oh, this is cool. It is really cool, isn't it? I yeah. love all these different wood textures as well. Okay, so let's stick these three or four together and then we can move on to the next part of our crafting. Um, or oh, we could decorate the pages next. That's fun, isn't it? Okay, so let's bring some bits and pieces in. Um, I've got some dies. I've got some little knickknacks. Um, super, super personal crafting. Okay, so I've got some of these little pictures. Obviously, these are like four by six, so we'll have to kind of chop into those or like die cut them. Um, so I might go in with some, let's kind of go in with some of our nesting dies, shall we, Kelly? These have looked really cool. Yeah. So I'm just going to sort of place oh, are those. are stitched ones as well? They are our stitched oh, ones. Nice. So they're going to look really like made with love. Yeah. Um, we've got our plates in the machine and we'll do a few at once so that we can get that all done and dusted. Um, so this is my ne this one is my nephew Sam. He was our little ring bearer. This one is my dad. He hates his picture being taken, but you can sometimes <laughs> like snap him in the garden or at the barbecue. 
So I'm just gonna, he's literally holding a bird and birds are really shy. I don't know how he's done. It's a little bit of a dot to do little. Um, he loves, he absolutely loves his garden and his birds and everything. Uh, this next one is my Nana who um, sadly passed away in November, but really, really cute. Um, I can't actually fit that star on there. So we'll go with another square, I think. Um, yeah, and then oh, we can fit them nice. both on. Yeah, that's my other nephew there, Josh. So these are just, obviously you can just do these with like any pictures really. Yeah. Um, or if you don't really have that many photographs, maybe their favorite sort of um, scenes or postcards or knickknacks from holiday. Yeah. So how many have we got there? Right, we've got three. So let's cut those out and then we can um, move on. And these are all our relatives' dies. Now this is just a sample pack, but we've got dad, we've got granddad. Um, so I might go with the granddad one um, because like I say, my, I have got two nephews. So my dad is a granddad of two. So let's squidge that one. And then we'll go with the with love as well. Shall we bring in some of our matastic cardstock? I think that's gonna go really nice to just bring a bit of block color into this. Very nice tones you've picked there. I think so. So we've got the honey, we've got the warm oak, and we've got the magnolia. So let's just stick those down. Yeah, let's do that. So we've got the granddad. And then let's go with the with love in the reverse. So this is gonna be really, really cute. This is, uh, this is just my kind of crafting. Sunday afternoon, cups of tea, get all the little knickknacks out. Yeah. And just kind of go a bit mad, you know? Okay, so let's cut those out. <clears throat> we'll just trim those down a little bit shorter. And then um, but I'm, I'm quite looking forward to Father's Day this year because I am spending it with with him because um, obviously like I've got my um, my in-laws as well and it's hard to pick isn't it like and I've got oh, I've, yeah, who you need to see yeah absolutely yeah. and um, this is actually my stepdad but he is like a like a dad to me yeah um, so I obviously I do have um, like a biological father as well um, who doesn't live too far away so trying to squeeze everyone in at Father's Day is really hard. Susan on Facebook I think I will try this one for my hubby Rebecca but use pictures of our five fur babies. Oh yes! Yes definitely. Um, what are these fur babies? Oh are know? they yeah have they got kitty claws or puppy paws? <laughs> <laughs> that is what but, Kelly wants to know. Yes I need to know that. Yeah, you could do it for any theme, you know, you could do it for a wedding, an anniversary, mm -hmm. mum, dad. Yeah. It'd be a really nice anniversary gift actually, wouldn't it? Oh, wouldn't it? Especially yeah. if you did them in um, like years as well that you've been like, you know, you could do your first, your second, oh, yeah. um, you know, like really, really, really special. Okay, so this photo paper is quite thick. I might actually have to um, run it through again. But all our sentiments on our matastics gone absolutely fine. Just going to grab this love off the magnetic plate. And then we'll just pop these photographs in again. Just because they're on that really thick, you know, glossy paper. Yeah. Perfect. Hopefully those have done really nicely now. Yeah, they have. And um, Susan has four dogs and one cat. Four dogs? Wow. Oh my goodness. That must be quite the morning walk. Do you know, when I was leaving work the other day, actually, I saw a man and I think he had six dogs. And do you think he was like a dog walker or they were all his? I thought that's what I was thinking, but he definitely had his hands full. Oh, really? Yeah. That's crazy. 
Okay, so let's. Oh, I love the. I love black and white photographs as well, aren't they nice? Yeah. So we'll probably put that one in the middle, and then we've got our two colour photographs as well. Okay, so let's get this all bringing together. Um, okie dokie. So we're just gonna just kind of just gonna pop them on here, really. Oh yeah, that looks nice. I'm kind of wishing I'd done this one a square one, just to be really pedantic, but it's fine. Um, okay, so I've done a little bit of brush lettering. So like I say, like my dad isn't my real dad. He's like a dad to me. And when I was growing up, you know, I didn't want to like make my sister feel like, you know, sort of, you know, with her dad and stuff. So we adopted the name Padre for my dad. Oh, okay. So I don't call him dad, I call him Padre. Um, or I do just use his name, which is Greg. Um, <laughs> <laughs> When I'm, when I'm not happy with him, he gets Greg. <laughs> um, and, and then I've cut the granddad, and then have we got the, oh yeah, we've got everything here that we need. Okay, so let's start putting this on. Um, I'm gonna probably just use construction glue for this. I don't really want it to be too bulky. So I'm just gonna go in with some construction glue, rather than putting everything on foam pads. So I'm just gonna just, Squidge that onto there. Carol Rooney is, but I have a lovely old dog and ten little monkeys and in brackets grandchildren. Oh yeah, <laughs> ten! Oh my goodness! Now that is a lot of cards at Christmas. It's a lot of presents. It's a lot of east. It's a lot of everything. <laughs> you must be very busy. Absolutely. I, I, do you know though? Coming from a big family, I totally understand. Like I really do. So. Me and David always say this about our, so our parents, obviously we're married, so we've got pet, our own parents and our in-laws, but I've got seven parental figures in my life. Oh gosh. So I've got my, my mum and her husband, Greg, I've got my dad and his wife, Pauline, uh, and then my, all my in-laws as well. So my father-in-law and his wife, and then my mother-in-law. So it's a bit crazy. So I know what that's kind of like. It's madness, isn't it? Buying, buying lots of Christmas presents. Yeah. Right, let's get this on with the glue stick. We're just gonna go in with our trusty purple glue stick. Just gonna kind of run our dye tool over these little weeds. And what sentiments, um, are these from a sentiment die set? Are they all together? These are on Moonstone Minis. Oh, are they on Moonstone Minis? Yeah, because the relative dies in the same sort of typography. So I've gone with the granddad, yeah. and then the with love one just matches perfectly that same font and style and size. So I thought that would be a perfect one to accompany this one. Yeah, definitely. So let's just go with that. And then I'm just gonna just use this little corner to just dab my glue on. And the great thing is this glue does dry clear. So don't worry about it hanging over anywhere. So just going to place that on there. I can tell already that I have not put enough on. I do like the drop shadow effect. It's so cool, isn't it? Yeah. I think doing it in those two colours as well is, is really nice. And then let's get the with love on as well. And I'm going to pop a tiny bit more glue on there because that poor little granddad Moonstone Mini is just about hanging on there. Okay, perfect. So bringing in our um, honey cardstock again for our drop shadow. Dabbing that glue on. Again, plenty on. They are a little bit skinny, so you don't wanna dab it too hard, but get plenty on, and then it will stick a little bit easier for you. Okay. Okay, perfect. So let's get those last little bits on. We can put a tiny little foam pad on there, get away with the little one, just for a little bit of dimension. So let's cut two little strips off and then we'll pop those on onto our pages. And again, if you want to use, like I say, like knickknacks or um, buttons, MDF shapes, anything, yeah. it'd look perfect on these. And like I say, I think scrapbooking as well is usually done by, like my scrapbook, for example, is 12 by 12, and that can be quite an intimidating space to fill, whereas these are just four by four. Yeah, so you don't need much. 
on them to make them look interesting. No, one tiny little picture and a sentiment and you're done. Yeah. Um, whereas, like I say, I think scrapbook pages do kind of feel a bit intimidating if you're not a scrapbooker. And as well, they take up a lot of room. Um, my scrapbook does live in a big drawer and it's a bit, it can be a little bit cumbersome. So these are just perfect. So we've got our three little pages. I'm not gonna do any more, just in the interest of time. Um, but like I say, let's stick these on then and we can get the sort of full effect of it opening up. So um, our last page that we're gonna stick on is we're just gonna cut the tabs off. And then that's, per that's gonna be perfect then, isn't it? Okay. And then last one with our red tape. Okay, so let's get all these stuck together. If anybody still wants the hunky dory fix this afternoon, Natalie is at Hobby Maker today. She She's is. At two o'clock with some new book of toppers. Oh, they're fabulous. So three more to add to our range. So, and then she's back there at four as well. So you can catch her at two o'clock and at four o'clock. Yeah, I know she's done some amazing demos. She's doing a little bit of um, adorable scoreball as well. It's going to be a really fun show. I can't wait to um, catch it. Because we're very lucky. We're allowed the telly on Hobby Maker when it's our shows, aren't we? Oh, yeah. So we always like to catch them. Give a little bit of support to Nat. Okay, so I'm just peeling the tape off of these tabs and then putting the next page sort of along the line. Okay. Oh, and then does that one stick in the box? Yeah, this one Let's will see. stick, yeah, into the box. Cool. Okay. Perfect. Okay, and then we're gonna get our box and then we're gonna sort of gently Concertina these up. Uh, I don't know how I want to do it actually. There we go. Just being really gentle with these photographs. Yeah. Okay, and then we're gonna put our tape on here. And again, I think I'm gonna use red because there's a lot of layers and it's really, really chunky. So we use our red tape because again, it's just perfect to partner up with our construction projects. Like it already wants to kind of spring apart. And then one last piece on here. And um, Susan has said it would be great to see you on Hobby Maker, Rebecca. Oh, oh never say never. Never say never. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's it's such a great channel, isn't it? Like you know, the demos are really cool, and the sets lovely, and yeah, it's it's so great. We we love. We love our friends at Hobby Baker. So we're just gonna kind of squeeze that in there, Aww. just so that it sticks to the box. And then, yeah, there we go. Made it a teensy bit tight, but that's okay. Pop our lid on. And then you could maybe pop a little bit of chocolate or a little bit of a oh, gift yeah. in there. And then when it pops out, it will just open up into this fabulous, obviously you're gonna to wanna to finish these two pages, yeah. but it's just gonna open up and then fold back in. You could even put a gift card at the very end. Oh, you? You wouldn't that be out. amazing? And then, yeah, and then the so many ideas. So let's show so you that again. Um, yeah, so just a plain, nice, ordinary box. Open it up and then bring out our pages. Perfect. Isn't that cool? Oh, it's really nice. Again, you could put a little bit of ribbon or a pull tab on there. That would be a really oh, nice yeah. idea. Um, super, super fun. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Well, we hope you've enjoyed the show today. We've had um, three fabulous makes. Um, do let us know if you are going to make um, these that Rebecca did for us first. So the bookmark and this lovely easel card. Um, like I said, Natalie's on Hobby Maker today at two o'clock and at about four o'clock. But we are back here tomorrow at 10am with Natalie and Kat.
for a bit of a roundup show. We've not done our little Wild West show for a while, so we will be starting the long weekend with a roundup show. But that's it from us. Thank you so much, Rebecca. You're welcome, Kelly. It was so fun. It was fun. And um, well, you'll be back on next week. Yes. Yep. Are you off next week? No, I'm not off next week. Oh, no. I thought maybe you were sunning yourself. Oh, you know, I wish. She, she loves <laughs> the holiday. But yes, thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed the show. And that's it from us today. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.